So this uh, concludes my discussion of uh, the discretization of uh, time. Next we have to consider discretization of uh, values. We know that digital computers require uh, digital values as well and not just uh, sequences of values. So now this domain also is uh, becoming a discrete uh, domain. Uh, the circuit that we are using for this conversion from the analog domain to the digital domain is called an AD uh, converter. And there are many different converters that we can use. I each uh, type of converter comes with uh, different characteristics. And as samples, I will be presenting two different types of such converters. Uh, the first uh, type of converter that I'm explaining in this uh, lecture is a converter which is uh, very fast but has only a very limited resolution. Uh, this converter is fast because we do the following. We assume that there is uh, our input uh, uh, signal which we call uh, h of t and the input signal h of t is uh, compared uh, to uh, the uh, margins for uh, different uh, voltage intervals. These uh, margins, these boundaries for these voltage intervals are generated by uh, using these uh, uh, resistors over here. We are using resistors, we are using a reference voltage and we are dividing this reference voltage into uh, equal intervals by using uh, equal resistors over here. In the simple case, we are using four resistors. As a result, uh, at uh, this uh, node here in this little circuit, we have three quarters of the reference voltage. Over here, we have two quarters of the reference voltage. And over here, we have just one quarter of the reference voltage. Down here, we have ground level. And then we have uh, circuits called comparators. These comparators will generate a logical one signal if the voltage at this positive input is exceeding the voltage there at the negative input and a logical zero otherwise. Uh, since there is always some noise on these input signals, we don't really have to discuss the case where the voltages are equal because they are never really 100% equal. Okay, so uh, we see that uh, there are a couple of these uh, uh, comparators and now let's assume that we have some input voltage which is somewhere uh, between the reference voltage and three quarters of the reference voltage. So in that case, uh, this uh, comparator up here would uh, generate a one, of course, uh, but the other comparators would also generate ones because the input voltage is also larger than, three qu uh, than uh, two quarters of the reference voltage and larger than one quarter of the reference voltage. So that means we are somewhere in uh, this area of the diagram over here. We see that uh, whenever we are in that range of uh, values for our input signal, uh, we would be generating the corresponding output uh, signal. And using this little encoder, we would typically uh, convert that to the uh, largest digital value that we can represent. Now let's assume that uh, the input voltage h of t is somewhat smaller. Let's assume that it is uh, somewhere uh, between uh, three quarters of the reference voltage and uh, two quarters or half of the reference voltage. If that's the case, then this comparator would generate a zero, that one would generate a one, that one would also generate a one, and uh, this little encoder will uh, generate then the second largest digital value in that case, so that little encoder would generate uh, this encoding there of the input signal. And we can continue on by now assuming that our input voltage is somewhere around there in that interval and then obviously these two uh, comparators would uh, generate uh, zeros and only that one would generate a one and this would be encoded as zero one and uh, that's what we are generating then as the output of that uh, digital to analog converter. And finally, we can consider the last case where uh, this uh, input voltage is somewhere in this interval and as a result these uh, comparators would all generate zeros and as a result we would be uh, generating the smallest uh, digital value at the output.
I haven't really discussed the case where uh, the input voltage is exceeding the reference voltage. In this uh, simple design, uh, we don't have any special output code for that, but we would just uh, generate the largest digital value in that case. So we see that in this case uh, we have a design uh, which seems to be pretty fast because we don't need any clock there. These comparators can be pretty fast. Uh, these encoders just uh, need a few logic uh, levels. So therefore uh, this uh, whole conversion can be done typically in a couple of, of nanoseconds. So this whole conversion is, is, is really very fast. But we also see that we need quite a number of uh, comparators here if we would like to distinguish between uh, n different uh, voltage intervals, we would need n minus one uh, different uh, uh, comparators. Just a second. Ich habe äh, das Notebook auf eine kleine Helligkeit gestellt und wenn mhm. er auf kleiner Helligkeit steht, dann fängt er an zu flackern und geht er in Helligkeit okay. hin und her. Ich wusste jetzt nicht, ob sich das bei Ihnen jetzt mit äußert oder nicht. Nein, nein, das, das äh, macht nur das interne Display. Das war so die Kamera bloß ein Stück verstärkt, aber schnell okay zu sehen. Ja, ich muss wieder, ich darf meine Schuhe nicht ausziehen. <lacht> ja, das ist ein entscheidender Zentimeter. <lacht> okay, ja, wir können es schneiden. Okay. Ja, das eine mit dem Ton, das kann man wahrscheinlich auch leicht rausschneiden, dass der erste Ton, da, dass da die Hymne rauskam, das ist wahrscheinlich nicht so schlimm. Okay, so we see that we need uh, quite a number of comparators here. So if we uh, would look at the complexity, we would come to the conclusion that we have uh, quite a number of components here. So if uh, we would like to evaluate uh, the characteristics of uh, this uh, uh, device, uh, we will in many cases talk about the resulting resolution. Uh, where the term resolution is actually uh, somewhat ambiguous because we can measure resolution in uh, terms of two different quantities. We can measure resolution in terms of the number of bits that we are generating and we can uh, measure resolution also in uh, the number of uh, in the uh, number of volts or in the voltage difference uh, between two adjacent uh, digital values. Uh, so the first thing I think is pretty obvious in uh, the previous example, the resolution in bits uh, was 2 because we were generating 2 bits. The resolution in volts uh, is corresponding to the voltage uh, range uh, that uh, we are able to convert. So in this uh, case, this was equal uh, to the reference voltage uh, divided by the number of intervals between which we uh, distinguish. And that means that in the previous slide, the resolution in volts is uh, one quarter of the reference uh, voltage. Now, uh, coming back towards uh, this issue of uh, complexity, uh, we are uh, saying that uh, this uh, device uh, has a, a speed, or more precisely a delay, uh, which is uh, of a constant order because it doesn't really depend on the number of voltage intervals or bits that we are generating. However, in practice, of course, we cannot generate uh, too many bits that way because we would just have uh, too many comparators and uh, the load on the input voltage would also be too high because of the too many inputs that we would have to feed. Uh, the hardware complexity is of the order of n, where n is the number of uh, voltage intervals. Uh, so actually we had uh, a number of comparators that was equal to n minus 1. So that is what we call order of n. So this makes it pretty clear that we can use this uh, device only uh, for cases where we uh, want to achieve a very high speed, but uh, where we don't really go for a very large resolution. So typical applications would be in video processing. Next I'd like uh, to look at a second type of device uh, that is useful for uh, different applications. 
So in this case, we are going for a higher resolution, and we can do this with a device which is called a successive approximation converter. For a successive approximation converter, we again have this input signal, uh, which is uh, fed into a comparator, and then the comparator is used as an input uh, to a so-called uh, successive approximation register and the associated control logic. Uh, this uh, successive approximation register has uh, as many uh, bits, has as many lines as uh, we would like to have as a resolution in bits. Uh, the uh, generated uh, digital output is uh, converted back into an analog uh, uh, voltage by using a digital-to-analog converter. We will see at the very end of this chapter uh, that digital-to-analog converters are very easy to design, so therefore it's not very difficult to design such a di uh, digital-to-analog converter. Now, the key idea of uh, successive approximation is well known to computer scientists because what we are exploiting here is the idea of binary, uh, binary search, which means that initially we will be setting uh, the most significant bit to 1 and all the other bits to 0. And then we would be generating the corresponding analog uh, voltage and we would be checking whether the input voltage would still be exceeding uh, the uh, generated uh, voltage, the generated internal voltage. Uh, if it does, then we keep that uh, bit uh, set to 1 and we start with the next bit. So we set that next bit to 1, all the others uh, would uh, be 0. We set the next bit to 1, we do this conversion again, and we then, then do the checking again. And if uh, in that case we assume that we are no longer exceeding the input voltage, then we would be resetting that bit to 0. Now I can show that on the uh, next slide uh, uh, as well. I can show how this uh, develops over time. So let's assume that initially we uh, try uh, this digital value and we check whether the input voltage is still exceeding uh, the generated internal voltage and if it does we keep that bit uh, set to 1. Uh, then we try the next bit and we compare the two voltages and we find that the input voltage does not exceed uh, the internal voltage so therefore we reset the bit. Uh, we try this for the third bit. We set it to 1, we observe the difference between these uh, two voltages and we keep it set as 1 and we then uh, try the fourth bit and uh, also we keep the fourth bit uh, set to 1. So this is how it works. And going back to this slide, uh, we can uh, look at uh, the, the remaining explanations here on the slide. Uh, first of all, uh, let's uh, evaluate the speed of this device. Uh, the speed of this device uh, depends on the number of steps that we need for this uh, conversion. And obviously uh, the number of steps that we need over here is equivalent to the number of uh, bits that we are returning here as uh, the output. Uh, so that's the binary uh, logarithm of the number of voltage intervals between which we uh, distinguish. So if we use this for example for a 16-bit audio output we would uh, need uh, 16 uh, bits there and also 16 uh, registers there in the uh, successive approximation uh, register array. Uh, the hardware complexity obviously is therefore al also proportional to the number of bits that we are uh, returning, where n is the number of distinguished uh, voltage levels. So we see that this converter obviously is uh, slower, uh, but also we achieve a higher uh, precision. So this we don't need again. Uh, so this slide uh, provides us with an overview of uh, different converters that can be used in practice. And in this slide we see an evaluation of the different converters in terms of the two very important figures of merit, in terms of the effective number of uh, uh, bits at the bandwidth at which we are doing this conversion, and uh, the input bandwidth.
And over here we see uh, the two converters that I did already discuss. We have this so-called flash converter, which is the fast converter used for video, for example. And also we see the so-called approxim uh, successive approximation converter, uh, which is providing a, uh, a compromise between the speed and the effective number of bits. You might have also uh, used other converters if you have used, for example, a multimeter for measuring voltages, then you will probably have uh, used these uh, integrated, uh, integrating uh, converters. Uh, there you can achieve an even higher resolution. And then there are some converters that I did not really discuss. Uh, pipeline converters can be built uh, from uh, flash converters, for example. And then there are some other converters that uh, uh, convert uh, uh, voltages to time intervals and then actually uh, measure uh, these uh, time intervals. Now there is a very nice uh, movie that I would like uh, to mention where you can get some additional impression and some additional explanation. It's a movie which is available from IEEE. Uh, it's suggested that uh, you uh, 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 try to watch this uh, movie from IEEE. It's freely available, uh, but for license uh, restrictions, uh, uh, due to license restrictions, I cannot really add this uh, to this uh, recorded lecture. So, um, let's go back to our slides.